Before we start today's episode, I want to recommend another amazing podcast to all of you listening. Simple English News Daily is a daily summary of the most important news happening around the world every day. And the best part? It's recorded in intermediate English. If you're interested in the news, current affairs and improving your English listening skills, I really recommend listening to Simple English News Daily. It's a great way to stay up to date with the world news while also practicing English. And it is just seven minutes long, uploaded every weekday, Monday to Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you will have podcasts to listen to. You can find a link to Simple English News Daily in the description or it is available on all podcasting apps. Thanks to Simple English News Daily for supporting this episode. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Hollywood's writers are on strike. Shows have stopped, scripts are going unwritten and there is no sign of an end. Let's discuss the reasons behind the Hollywood writers' strike and the potential consequences on today's episode of Thinking in English. You can find the full transcript for free over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. Join my conversation clubs and Patreon to improve your English. Leave a like and rating wherever you are listening right now. And here is today's vocabulary list. Strike. Strike. A period of time when workers refuse to work because of an argument with an employer about working conditions, pay levels or job losses. As in, a wave of strikes swept the country. Studio. Studio. A building or place where films are made or the company that makes films. As in, he sold a TV show to a well-known studio. To walk out. To walk out. To stop working or leave your job because of a disagreement with your employer. For example, workers are threatening to walk out. Script. Script. The words of a film, play, broadcast or speech. For instance, two writers collaborated on the script for the movie. Union. Union. An organisation that represents the people who work in a particular industry, protects their rights and discusses their pay and working conditions. For example, the government's proposals have been strongly criticised by the trade unions. Compensation. Compensation. The combination of money and other benefits or rewards that an employee receives for doing their job. For example, annual compensation for our executives includes a salary and bonus under our plan. Residual. Residual. A payment made to an actor, singer, writer for repeated uses of their work. As in, he makes $60 million a year from Seinfeld residuals alone. Season. Season. One of several series of television programmes with the same title and the same characters. As in, it is the second season of the TV show. The internet is usually full of clips from the most popular American late-night TV shows. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, and many more. But at the moment, there are no clips online from these shows, because they are no longer on TV, all of them. The famous Saturday Night Live of NBC is also no longer live. They are showing old episodes instead. 
incredibly popular shows including Stranger Things on Netflix, HBO's Hacks, Cobra Kai, The Last of Us and The Handmaid's Tale have all stopped production until further notice. And even if you haven't noticed any effect yet, over the next weeks, months and maybe even year, you could see some more changes in American TV and movies. Why? What is happening? Well, Hollywood's writers are striking. The people who make the scripts for TV shows, write the jokes for late night comedians and think up the stories for movies are no longer working. The Writers Guild of America, a trade union made up of over 11,000 Hollywood writers, went on strike at the beginning of May after negotiations failed with major movie and television studios. Discussions had been held for over a month, but without the signing of a new contract between the union and the studios, no writers are working. Out of the 11,000 union members, 97.85% voted in favour of strike action. While this is not the first time Hollywood writers have walked out of their jobs, this was the highest percentage of votes in favour in history. Now, I've said the term writer's strike quite a lot over the past few minutes, but what does that really mean? When workers go on strike, it means they are refusing to work as a form of protest. Usually the aim of a worker's strike is to gain some form of concession from their employer. Higher wages, better working conditions, sick pay or some other kind of benefit. Strikes happen all over the world and in many different industries. Over the past few months, the UK, my country, has had regular strikes by postal workers, doctors, nurses and train drivers all of whom are concerned about rising costs of living and inflation. Usually strikes are organised by unions, groups created to represent the interests of workers in specific industries. The Writers' Strike is similar. The Writers' Guild of America is a labour union and counts most writers in Hollywood as members and the members of the union will not work again until a deal is reached between the union and the film and TV industry, represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. What does this mean? Well, no writer will create any new scripts, update any existing scripts, or help with any work until a new deal is reached and agreed by a majority of union members. Now, there are some members of the union who also work other jobs, for example in radio, online media, podcasts or public TV, and they are allowed to keep working in those industries, but they are not allowed to work as a writer. This is not the first time Hollywood's writers have gone on strike. In 2007 to 2008, writers went on strike, demanding fair compensation for their work in the digital age. The 100-day strike resulted in TV shows being paused, film delays and the cancellation of the 2008 Golden Globe Awards. Ultimately, the writers secured a new contract with improved terms. But the effects of this strike were massive. It apparently cost California's economy over $2.1 billion dollars and you may notice some of your favourite TV shows from around that time have shorter seasons and less episodes. In 1988, a 22-week-long writer's strike occurred, focusing on creative control and residual payments for TV shows. This strike caused disruptions, shorter seasons, and the introduction of replacement programming. It concluded with a new agreement addressing some of the writers' concerns and establishing a better compensation structure for reruns and video releases. So in 1998 or 1988, sorry, the strikes were about control and payments for TV shows. 
In 2007, the writers went on strike over concerns about digital media and streaming. So what are Hollywood strikes about this year? Well, a lot of writers working on major Hollywood movies and TV shows are struggling to survive. This is despite working for many of the most valuable companies in the world, including Disney, Fox and other internationally known brands. Writers can make money in a few different ways. They may write a script and sell it to a studio, they could sell an idea for a new show or movie, they could get hired to rewrite and make changes to an existing script, or they could get a job as a regular writer on a TV show. Writers are also entitled to residual payments. If they write episodes for an incredibly popular TV show or movie, which is still shown regularly on TV, like Friends, How I Met Your Mother, or The Big Bang Theory, they may get payments from the TV station years after they wrote the script. However, as there are so many writers working in Hollywood, only a few of them have long-term jobs, or come up with ideas that are bought for millions of dollars. Most writers are not making massive amounts of money. This is the core issue at the centre of this year's strike, and probably every strike around the world. Money. There is a slightly confusing paradox in Hollywood right now. There are more writing jobs than ever in history, due to streaming platforms like Disney+, Plus, Netflix and Amazon Prime making hundreds of new shows every year. But at the same time, the amount writers are earning is falling. Over the past decade, the average writer pay has declined by 4% which is closer to 23% when adjusted to inflation and the rising cost of living. There are many complex reasons for this. Uh, shows on streaming platforms tend to be shorter than normal American TV shows and may have a year or more break between each season, so there's less work if you work on a TV show. More shows are released online only now, which changes the way writers are paid and the amount of unpaid work writers are expected to do is increasing, like rewriting scripts they have written already for free. If you write for a show on normal broadcast or network TV, you can get residual payments if it is a huge success. If you write for a massively successful Netflix show, you don't get any extra or bonus payments. Moreover, while in the past large rooms of writers, producers and senior staff would work together to create stories and scripts, it is now more common to separate these roles. And this has made it more difficult for low-level writers to move towards better paid jobs and makes it easier for writers to be replaced quickly. One of the other massive concerns for writers this year is artificial intelligence. AI could eventually remove the need for most TV and film writers entirely. You may think this is impossible. Right? Computer technology will never be able to write a high-quality TV script. But AI is so new and developing quickly, we don't know what will happen in the next few years. I actually experimented and tested ChatGPT myself. As many TV shows have similar formats for each episode, think about American sitcoms, which kind of have the same structure every show, AI can quite easily think of episode ideas. So I logged into ChatGPT and I wrote this prompt. I asked ChatGPT, I want you to pretend to be a TV writer working in Hollywood. You have been hired to generate episode ideas for a new series of the popular sitcom Friends. The series is set in 2023, two decades since the last season aired. Create two episode ideas, a title and one paragraph synopsis for each idea. And it did it. It gave me ideas for the first two episodes of a new season of Friends. I'll post the image of the full response on the transcript, but the ideas it gave me were okay. The first episode would be the main characters reuniting, 
and the second episode would be about them using modern technology in their lives. I then asked AI what the main storylines and character arcs would be for this season, and it did that as well. What does this mean? Well, TV and film studios may be able to use AI to generate ideas for new shows and episodes. Instead of hiring a writer, or I guess buying an idea from a writer, they just need to hire that writer to finish the script and revise what the AI has already created. This means writers would be paid much less, as the studio doesn't need to buy their ideas, just to hire them for a few hours to edit a script. Then there is also the issue of copyright. Artificial intelligence is known to copy, steal, and take influence from existing work already created. If studios are using AI, then there is a high chance that writers' work could be stolen, just like the concern artists have with AI art. AI is cheaper, faster, and can work longer hours than a human. And while it is not better than human writers today, it may be in the future. The Writers' Union is trying to negotiate for deals to include not just fairer pay for writers, but also include provisions for the use and limitations of AI. So what's going to happen next? Well, the union will keep striking until its members are happy with the deal that has been negotiated. And this could take months. Last time, it took 100 days. I recently watched the comedy show Scrubs on Netflix, and I noticed one season had significantly less episodes than all other seasons. This was due to the 2007 and 8 writers' strike. The effect may be less noticeable this year, many shows, including streaming shows, have shorter seasons anyway, or pre-recorded episodes and don't mind taking longer breaks between seasons. And there are already thousands of TV shows online for people to watch. And as movies take a long time to make, the effects of the strike will be even less noticeable. However, there is always the possibility that other unions working in Hollywood may also join in with strikes. At the end of June, the Union for Hollywood Directors and the Union for Actors and Voice Actors will also need to renegotiate the deal. Their pay deal. And the unions representing all of the other people who work on film sets, like electricians, prop makers and safety coordinators, have given permission for their members to also refuse to work, although this is not an official strike. And the Teamsters Union, representing truck drivers, have in the past refused to deliver goods to companies with striking workers. If more unions go on strike, we could see the entirety of American TV and film stop. So here is today's final thought. The Hollywood writers' strike is causing significant disruptions in the TV and film industry. The strike was initiated by the Writers Guild of America, whose members are demanding fairer compensation for their work. The core issue revolves around declining right of pay, despite an increase in the number of writing jobs. Streaming platforms and the rise of artificial intelligence pose additional challenges to writers' livelihoods. While the strike may not have an immediate impact on us due to pre-recorded episodes and shorter seasons, the long-term effect could be substantial. The union will continue striking until a satisfactory agreement is reached, but the possibility of other unions joining the strike raises concerns about a complete halt in American TV and film production. What are your thoughts on the Hollywood writers' strike? Do you think other unions in the industry should support the writers' strike? What's your opinion? What do you think? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify. You can go onto Spotify and leave a comment in the Q&A section. Uh, leave a comment on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube right now. 
Uh, leave a comment on the Thinking in English transcript. There's a comment section at the bottom of the transcript. Go and practice writing and, and leave a comment there. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate all of your comments and all of your messages. Uh, it's really amazing to hear from you. And I want you to practice writing. So write a comment and practice writing. If you want to support Thinking in English, please consider subscribing to Patreon uh, for our weekly conversation clubs, bonus episodes, study groups, and many more interesting things. Um, I've got a big announcement coming up in the next few weeks, maybe maybe next month, um, and Patreon uh, members will be able to use this announcement first before anyone else. Um, and yeah, thank you all for listening so much. Uh, this is the end of today's episode and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.